Series 7 now, and this is certainly a peculiar Peep Show series, DVD bonus material wise. In short, there isn't any. Yep, just straight up, there's no bonus features or additional material for Series 7 of Peep Show at all. You can see here that the back of the DVD case is missing that little bonus feature box that all the other series have had, and here's the menu, just the episodes in a subtitle toggle. That's it. Obviously, this is quite disappointing. I know I've mentioned how the DVDs were certainly getting less extra filled as time has gone on. We went from completely unique standalone segments with all new footage, loads of specifically written dialogue, large amounts of deleted scenes and behind the scenes material, to now nothing at all. Not even any repurposing of existing footage that took up the bulk of material on the last few DVDs. Uh, yes, you, you do surprise me. Series 7's DVD came out in 2010. Streaming services were becoming more and more prominent at this time, and Channel 4 had 4OD, their online service, which is free and readily available. So Peep Show is easy to find and watch without the need for any physical media. And if you're getting fewer and fewer DVD sales, at what point do you just say that it's not worth putting any more effort into them than absolutely necessary? Well, seems for now that that point was Series 7. This is the end times. I'd have liked to have seen some behind the scenes stuff for this series. There's a whole lot of unique and interesting characters and locations that are never seen again after their appearance here, which is a shame. No deleted scene with Hans and Mark's mum, or a behind the scenes of Mark's jump out the window to escape the nether zone. But as you can probably tell by the runtime of this video, and the fact that there will be no reason to make a video about nothing, there is something to be discussed. In fact, two things. Two. Oh, that's not enough. Neither of them are technically additional material for Series 7, but they are both pieces of Peep Show media from Series 7's era. Yes, the only series of Peep Show with no DVD bonus features just happens to have multiple related pieces of media from right around its release. Is that a coincidence? I guess. Channel 4, who are the TV network on which Peep Show is broadcast, used to hold an annual event named Channel 4's Comedy Gala to raise money for the Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital. These are mostly stand-up comedy shows with a big lineup of comedians doing whatever it is they do, but the galas also include special one-off clips and shorts from other celebrities or from some of Channel 4's other programming. And as you can probably guess, one of these galas, the 2010 one to be specific, contained a one-off, three-minute long Peep Show short titled Charity. This has never been released anywhere other than the TV broadcast of the event and this DVD here, the official release of the 2010 comedy gala. God, this is like after sex. Now I'm gonna have to talk to him. To be more specific about dates, the live event that this was part of took place on the 5th of April 2010, which places it directly between the end of Series 6 and the start of Series 7, hence why I'm including it as part of this Series 7 video. Now technically that poses some questions as to when exactly the events of the short would take place in the world of Peep Show, as the last episode of Series 6 leads directly into the first episode of Series 7, but I don't think it's really a big deal. Although nothing in the short contradicts the Peep Show lore, I doubt it was ever intended to be a genuine addition to the story of Mark and Jeremy, so I'm just going to view it as its own standalone thing. Super. So in the short, Mark and Jez are at a cafe or a pub or whatever this place is. They then have a short conversation and Jez donates some money to a charity collector for the Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital. They then get the bill for their meals and Jez realises he accidentally gave £20 to charity instead of the tenner he intended to and can't pay the bill. So then he asks for the money back from the charity bucket. And uh, can you make sure all of my money goes straight to the kids? It is a kids charity. It's just over three minutes long and takes place entirely on one small set, one which isn't a location used in Peep Show before this, and obviously the actress that plays the charity collector, the only speaking role outside of Mark and Jez, isn't someone who has appeared in the show before either. The most notable thing about this short is probably the fact that it contains a laugh track. I'm not saying you're trying to cream it off like a fat cat, but just uh, let's make sure it goes. Yes, we went from jokingly including a laugh track over Peep Show in the Series 6 bonus features, showing how ridiculous and unnecessary it is, to legitimately having Peep Show with a laugh track, or I guess I should say audience laughter, because this isn't something added on after the fact. All of the various clips and shorts in this comedy gala have audience laughter in them because this actually was being played in front of a big audience, and you can tell the audio in the short is coming from microphones at the event because everything has a very slight but definitely noticeable echo. Oh, great. <laughs> That's all they're getting, is it? So no, this isn't some heinous crime of the boffins behind Peep Show choosing to include audience laughter in their short. It's simply there due to the context of why this thing even exists in the first place, which is fair enough in my opinion. Though of course, it would have been nice to have a clean version of the short with just the source audio, but unfortunately that isn't something that was ever released. Also on that front, they most likely didn't have the rights to use the normal Peep Show audio for this event, namely the main theme Flagpole Sitter by Harvey Danger, as it has instead been replaced by some generic sounding rock music. Music, the kind of thing you'd pluck from a stock audio library because it sounds vaguely similar to the actual theme, without being the actual theme.
well, maybe vaguely is giving it a bit too much credit. It has a guitar in it. There's nothing from Pip Pop Plop by Daniel Pemberton either, and it's strange hearing Peep Show without either of its two most recognisable pieces of audio. Mark reads a newspaper while he's at the table with Jez, and he skips past the real news to go to the sports section, bringing the conversation onto football. Jez asks Mark who he supports. I like to keep an eye on Stoke. You do not keep an eye on Stoke. Yep, Mark lies about being a Stoke City fan, who I don't imagine call themselves Stokers. Graham was a Stoker. Stoke is obviously irrelevant to the rest of the short, but the city does get mentioned again in Series 9 of Peep Show in the episode Gregory's Beard. Obviously don't rap, remember? After Stoke. After mistakenly donating 20 quid instead of 10, meaning he can't pay the bill, Jez suggests doing a runner, something which Mark definitely doesn't want to do. The same situation happens again in the Series 8 episode, Big Mad Andy, when Dobby also suggests running away from the bill. Let's do a runner. I am not doing a runner, and if I'm not doing a runner, you're not doing a runner. Should we just fucking do a runner? But unlike Dobby in that episode, Jez cannot be so easily dissuaded, so he tries to do the runner anyway, resulting in the ending moment of the short. My friend here is in the process of doing a runner. There's not really much more to it. This charity short is fun as a novelty, and I like the fact that we get to see Mark and Jez in just a random, ordinary situation outside of any big, overarching storyline, but I didn't think it was overly funny, to be honest. But I think this is a moment in which we need to detach ourselves from the little peep show world that we live in and consider the wider picture here. This is a comedy event for charity, played in front of many people that probably aren't familiar with Peep Show at all, so they weren't really going to make anything too outrageous. This is fucking wicked. Copies exist in various places online if you want to watch it for yourself, which I would recommend seeing as this is such a unique Peep Show oddity, but there's not really that much more to it outside of the novelty of the fact that it exists in the first place. Don't look away. Stay with it. On the 24th of December 2010, Christmas Eve, Channel 4, the network on which Peep Show is broadcast, aired a TV documentary named Peep Show and Tell as part of something named Peep Show Night. Good evening and welcome to Peep Show Night! Peep Show Night was a celebration of Peep Show and it featured the Peep Show and Tell documentary, as well as the first broadcast of the Series 7 episode Seasonal Beatings, hence this being on Christmas Eve, and two episodes that were picked by fans. Those were Shrooming from Series 3 and Wedding from Series 4. An official Peep Show documentary you might be asking, how have I not heard of this? Don't start yet. Just let me get settled. Okay. Well, as far as I can tell, this documentary was only ever broadcast a single time, that one airing on Christmas Eve 2010. I can find no record of it ever being played again after this, nor can I find any evidence of it being able to be streamed online or rewatched officially. It seems that this documentary, which ran for an hour including adverts, which features all new interviews and previously unseen footage, was literally only made to be shown a single time, and then it was brushed under the carpet, never to be heard from again. Too right. We're moving on. A copy of it survives online on YouTube, and I had a copy already too. Plus, people have sent it to me a few times over the years. But as far as I can tell, all the digital copies online are taken from a single original source, which is the same copy as the upload on YouTube. So unless anyone can tell me or show me any different, I do not believe a high-quality copy of this documentary publicly exists anymore, which is a massive shame. It's kind of crazy that a piece of peep show media from as recent as 2010 could have genuinely been considered lost media had it not been for a single recording that somebody made. Now, there's possibly a reason as to why it was never broadcast on TV again, that being that the documentary was specifically made for Peep Show Night, and it's spoken about in the footage. Welcome to Peep Show Night! I guess that would have been a bit confusing if it was shown again on TV when it wasn't Peep Show Night, but for online streaming I don't really see the issue. It's like you're in trouble there mate. The documentary includes lots of classic Peep Show moments as you'd obviously expect something like this to, and as it's 2010 you get songs like CeeLo Green's Fuck You playing in the background as though we hadn't heard that enough times already. Ready. He's bringing it up. Oh, he's taking it down. He's taking it down. But I'll skip over all the general clips from the series and just look at the stuff that's new. The major thing of note is that we get the best look at POV that we've ever had. POV was the name of the show that would eventually become Peep Show. Here's what I assume to be some sort of title graphic. POV was originally thought out to be, as it's referred to in this documentary, a real-life Beavis and Butthead. You'd have two characters reacting to things they watch on TV and they comment and joke about. For the first time ever, clips of the pilot episode of POV are shown, and this is just amazing for the hardcore Peep Show fans. This is the root of everything that was yet to come. You know, this cartoon thing I've got going with Sophie at work. Yeah. Well, do you think it would be over the top if I did something in oils? What's your usual medium? Byro. Yeah. Through the clips I'm showing, it's pretty clear to see ideas which would later make their way into Peep Show. Brown for first course, white for pudding. 
Bob Ross, White and Brown Toast, Sophie giving Mark her number. Just some of the things that were present here that stayed all the way until the actual show was made. Plus, Mark and Jez just sat on the sofa watching TV, which was the original idea for POV, happens quite frequently in early Peep Show. The full length episode of POV has never been released, so even these short little clips are nice to have. They may genuinely be all we ever get to see of the POV pilot, and yeah, imagine like I said earlier, if a copy of this documentary was never recorded, they'd just simply have been lost. There's a moment in it in which David and Rob are talking, and Rob gets on the topic of Super Hands. He says that he loves the name Super Hands because it's such an odd name for a major character in a sitcom. He then says this. I mean, wh what the fuck? Why don't you call him Simon? Uh, what? Superhands' name being Simon was only unveiled in the episode Gregory's Beard from Series 9. Simon? Simon? I Super Simon? So did Robert already know that Hans' name was Simon, even though it wasn't known in the show at this point? Or is there a chance that Sam and Jesse took Hans' real name from Rob's comment in this documentary? Honestly, I doubt the latter, but it really is a strange coincidence if his name wasn't yet decided on as being Simon at this point in the Series 7 era. There's some new behind-the-scenes footage included, like another look at Sam and Jesse's writing room, although you can't make anything out from the whiteboard like you could in Series 5. Plus, there's videos of script read-throughs for the cast. <laughs> <laughs> this really feels like stuff that would have been on the DVD bonus features of any other series. Could the creation of this documentary have somehow stopped the creation of bonus features for the series or something? Like they recorded the behind the scenes stuff but used it for this documentary which was made well before a series 7 got a physical release and so they didn't want to or couldn't use the footage? Really we have no way of knowing but it does make you think. Also shown is some behind the scenes of the creation of the flat set again, it seems that it gets remade for every series plus some clips of Zara's flat and the hospital. But one clip also shows a terrifying David Mitchell sticker. Are you ready? Ready for that grimace? No thanks. Send that back to hell alongside the David Mitchell from the Russian cover of Magicians. There isn't much more to say about this documentary really. The vast majority of the runtime here is interviews with the cast and crew that I'd say are probably worth a listen, but if you're in a position like I am, where you've seen these same people get interviewed about the same things over and over again, you aren't going to get too much that you haven't already heard before. What? Fuck you. So I guess I'll leave it at that. Obviously Series 7 didn't have any true bonus features, but I'm glad that there was, just by pure chance, well, I assume chance, chance would be a fine thing, multiple pieces of tangentially related pieces of peep show media that really during the era of this series. And to quell any questions about what the series having no bonus features means for the final two episodes of this video series, I guess I'll just spoil the fun a bit and say that luckily some bonus features do return for series 8. This one was just a bit of an outlier. So, on we go. Bada bing, bada bye. Bada bing, bada bye.